In today's video, we're going over tips and tricks on the Samsung Galaxy A10e. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, first of all, thank you for joining us. Second of all, if you can go down to the bottom and click on that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you can be alerted every time we post new videos, that would be awesome. Also, quick note, in the description section of this video, right below the video, you're gonna find a bunch of cool resources. So some of our favorite cases for the A10e, awesome screen protectors, and some other cool accessories. So take a second and scroll down and take a look at all that cool stuff. Let's jump right in guys. The first thing we want to show you is how to increase your screen timeout time. So basically it's the time in between you touching the screen and when the screen goes dim. What you're going to do is go to the settings. So you either find the settings by swiping up and it's right there. In our case we have it on our home screen right here. So we're going to just tap right here. We're going to go down to display. And then we're going to go to screen timeout. Now out of the box, this is normally set to 30 seconds. We like to put it on at least two minutes or five minutes because it's gonna keep your screen on a lot longer uh, where you don't have to constantly touch it to keep it from going dim. So that is our first uh, little tip right there. Number two, we're gonna stay in our settings. Just hit the back button and we're gonna go to notifications, which should be higher on the list. So notifications status bar and we're going to turn on show battery percentage and now you'll always see the percent of the battery in the upper right corner right here even if you're on your home screen you'll always see the battery percentage this is a very important thing i love it to have it on all my phones it just helps me keep track of how low the battery actually is and kind of create some urgency around hey i need to go ahead and charge so there is that we're going to jump back into the settings and this time we're gonna go to care or device care. And this is a really important section that you're gonna wanna use because it's gonna keep your phone running fast. It's gonna help you free up uh, unnecessary things that are stored on your phone and make sure your phone is optimized to run at the fastest speed and the best performance speed possible. So all you do is come into the device care app, hit that optimize button and it's gonna close any apps that have been open too long free up space uh, on your RAM and also free up storage. Any temporary files that have been downloaded, it will also help to get rid of those as well. Now, along with this tip, you can actually hold down on your home screen. So hold down and go to widgets. And there's a cool little widget that goes with this feature so you can easily remember to optimize your phone at least once a day. So it's the device care widget and you're just gonna put your finger on it and hold, or excuse me, you're gonna tap first and then hold down on it and then you can drag it right to your home screen. And now you'll have a little optimize button that if you feel like your phone is ever running slow or it's you know not running at the speed you're used to it running, just go ahead and tap on optimize and it'll automatically uh, run that same check on the RAM, running apps, and the storage to make sure that the phone is running at its best performance, and if not, it will make adjustments. All right, guys, our next tip is going to be how to get more apps on your home screen. So on that same note of how we got to this widget, you're just gonna hold down on the home screen, just find a blank spot, tap on home screen settings, and at the top here you have home screen grid and app screen grid. You're gonna tap on app screen grid. And right now it's set to four by five. And if we change it, we can go to, actually, excuse me, sorry. Let's take a step back. You wanna go to home screen grid, not app screen grid. So home screen grid, tap there. And we're gonna change it from four by five to four by six, which gives us an extra row or five by five, which is an extra row and an extra column, or five by six, which will give us two extra rows and one extra column. So this will give you a lot more space to add a lot more things to your home screen. It will shrink down the apps a little bit, and if you're okay with that, you can basically get more apps or widgets on your home screen. So that is how you get more apps on your home screen. Our next little tip is gonna show you how to change your navigation button. So at the bottom here, we have our recent apps on the left 
and our back button on the right. Well, depending on what phone you used previously, you might be used to these being in a different order. So by going to the settings and going to, let's see, you can just do a quick search, tap on the little magnifying glass here and just uh, type in nav NAV and we're going to tap on navigation let's see navigation bar from here tap again to navigation bar and this will allow you to change the order of the apps so if you want it to be in the opposite order just come down here and it will switch put your recent apps on this side and your back button on the left so you've got two options there so that is the navigation bar adjustment. By the way, guys, if you like the way my settings look, this is the dark mode, which uh, we're actually going to show you how to turn this on in our hidden features video. So stay tuned for that one. We'll definitely actually in the upper right corner of the video somewhere over here. You should see a little bubble pop up uh, in a few days, and that's going to have our hidden features video where we'll show you how to turn on night mode. So definitely stay tuned for that. Okay, guys, find anywhere on the screen where you can type. You're going to tap on, like I just tapped on Google to bring up the keyboard. From here, we're going to tap on the little settings wheel. And we're going to go to keyboard layout and feedback. And then we're going to go to keyboard themes. And from here, we can select uh, a couple of different options here. So we do have the light option. We have the dark option as well. We also have the adaptive theme, which will change the light of the keyboard depending on um, depending on the app screen. So it'll just kind of uh, adjust depending on what you're doing. So those are kind of the two main options that you have, light and dark. Now also, uh, and this will actually lead into our next little tip, which is going to be um, how to change more than just the keyboard. Maybe you want to customize more than just the keyboard. Maybe you want the whole phone to look different than the way it came out of the box. Well, to do that is really simple. We're going to hold down on our home screen here. We're going to go to themes. So you have a theme section, which takes you to your theme store. And from here, you'll be able to download uh, a lot more than just a keyboard background. You'll be able to download a whole theme that will change everything from your app icons to your your call app screen, your uh, your text message screen. It will change uh, the colors of everything in the phone. So let's find a little simple theme that we can test so you can see how this looks. Now, personally, I like to find the free themes because I don't like to spend money. So. There are plenty of paid themes. You can go crazy if you like, but if you come down here, top free, we can look at a bunch of themes that won't cost us any money. So I'm going to just choose the first option in the upper left corner right here. You're going to hit download. Give it a second to download. Now the cool thing is while it downloads or uh, even before you download, you can just tap and you can look at what all your screens are going to look like. So this is our lock screen. This is what the home screen looks like. It changes all of the icons to a nice white, a really clean look. This is the caller screen, text message screen, and the notification panel. So it will change the color of all your switches as well. So that is pretty cool. And your keyboard. So the keyboard will be sort of a grayish color and um, certain keys will turn orange. So this is the cool thing with the theme store. You can change more than just the color of the keyboard. You can change the color of everything. So at this point, you would just hit apply and it's gonna completely change everything and you'll have your new theme. And if you ever wanted to change back, you would just come back to the theme section and you can just switch back to your old theme. At the very top here, you can see um, your old theme will be right here. So this is the new theme I just downloaded. And these are a few other really basic themes. These are like a dark mode theme that just has a, a blank background and a really clean look. So this is the theme store. A few more things I want to show you. If you don't want to change everything, you just want to change maybe your wallpaper. You just want to find a, a beautiful wallpaper here. You can look at all the stock wallpapers that come with the phone and you can also search through a ton of really beautiful looking wallpapers as well obviously come down a little bit lower to get to the free ones oh i don't see the free ones here 
Oh, well, they're somewhere, somewhere buried in there. So definitely search for the free ones. Um, and then at the bottom here, so there's wallpaper, themes, and there's icons. So I can also just download a new icon pack and I can have um, some really cute little icons to go with whatever wallpaper I like. So this is one wallpaper, or excuse me, one icon theme here. Anything that's paid, by the way, you can always tap on download trial and you can trial it for 10 minutes to see if you like it and the phone will automatically revert back to your old icons after. So there's no worry and oh, like I have to commit to buy it. You just download trial, test it, see if you like it. If you do, then go ahead and confirm the purchase. So a bunch of really cool themes in here as well. All right, moving on to our next tip. So we went over customizing keyword, went over uh, some themes. Let me go back really quickly to the keyboard because we sort of jumped past that rather quickly. Um, so settings and we have our smart typing. So there's a few other things you can do with the keyboard as well. And I wanted to make sure not to just brush over this. So um, you can actually set what are called text shortcuts. So you can type in one word and say, whenever I type in this word, I want you to input this. So like with uh, an email address, for example, or even a nickname, you could type different things in here and it can speed up how long it takes you to type. So that's pretty cool. The keyboard is automatically set to swipe, but you can also change it to a cursor control, which means that when you're typing text, you just glide across the screen and you can move between your texts a little bit easier. But in order to turn that on, you do have to turn off the swipe keyboard. So I like swipe, so I currently usually keep it on that setting. And those were just a few other things that I wanted to show you in that section. All right, so moving on to our next feature. So uh, another really cool thing you can do with this phone is you can have the home screen uh, rotate to landscape. So basically it's when you take the phone and you tilt it sideways, the whole phone can rotate with you if you enable the feature. So hold down on the screen, go to home screen settings, and we're going to turn on rotate to landscape mode. And by turning this on now, if I take the phone and I tilt it sideways, it will actually rotate with you. And this is a really big feature considering you normally never see this on lower end phones. So um, just a really clean look, it converts everything and you can still use the phone and enjoy it in the landscape mode. So definitely thought that was cool and worth showing. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed it, but the phone has actually been charging this whole time because we actually have a, a little, um, wireless uh, dongle adapter here. It just plugs right into your charging port. Normally you put a case on this so you don't see it, but I can just take the phone after it rotates and I can just place it right on this wireless charging pad and my phone is charging while I'm shooting the video. So there it is, there's our quick charge. So what I'm gonna do is leave a link in the description of where you guys can get that little adapter. It's really inexpensive. It only costs about 10 or $15. So with that and a wireless charging pad, you guys can wireless charge with your um, Samsung Galaxy A10e. So little tip right there, definitely in the description, you'll find all the details to get one of those and basically get this really nice phone wireless charging. Let's go ahead and move on to our next feature here, which is one I love and I use a lot. It's called full phone search. And just simply by swiping down or uh, swiping up, to your app drawer, you have a little uh, search at the very top called Finder Search. And with Finder Search, you can search for just about anything you can think of that is on the phone. For example, let's say you were trying to find a message, a text message that someone sent you that had directions in it or something. You can go to Finder Search and you can basically just type in what you're looking for and it will search through the whole phone. So in the past, I searched for this $50 because that's how much the bill should be for the phone. And I got a text message saying that that was the bill. So, so just that quick little search. And here is my text message right here. 
from customer care and I can tap on that and it says, oh, thank you for your purchase and really easy. So um, this is a really cool feature that will allow you to search through the phone and basically find anything you need. So a contact, something you put in a text message, something in an email, um, it, or even a file. Maybe you downloaded a picture and the picture had a name. You can do that search to help you find it faster than trying to remember what app you were in or what you were doing. You can also use it to just search for general apps on the phone as well. So very useful feature. Let's go ahead and jump in. Our next little um, little tip is going to be, for those uh, old school people who are used to having an app drawer button, we can get that back. And let me show you how. Hold down on your home screen, find a blank spot. Go back to home screen settings. And we're just gonna turn on apps button. And by turning this on, now we have our little apps button right here. And for those that really don't like the swiping up to get to your apps, because sometimes you can hit the wrong thing. Now you just have your app drawer button just like it used to be on older Samsung phones. Now if you decide, hey, I don't really want that on, it's cool, but it's not really for me, no problem. Go ahead and hold down the home on the main screen again, go back to home screen settings, and just turn off apps button. And just that easy, poof, it's gone. All right, our next tip is gonna be something that's gonna make it easier for you to take pictures, especially when you're holding the phone with one hand. So we're gonna launch the camera, just swipe up, go to the camera. Now in the current set setting, you actually have to hit the camera button right here to take a picture. But if we go to the settings, go down to shooting methods, and from here, we're going to turn on floating shutter button. And now we have this little uh, floating shutter button right here so I can put it wherever uh, it's most convenient and now I can take a picture. So maybe it's hard to reach my finger down here but I can reach up here. I can put it right there and then it's easy to just take a picture just like that versus having to reach down here. So that's called the floating shutter button. Definitely a cool little camera feature that um, I tend to use pretty frequently. Okay, let's get our phone rotated back to the normal setting, there we go. Let's get back charging. I love that wireless charging. All right, our next little feature is gonna show you how to change your shortcuts on the lock screen of the phone. So um, just to show you, when you turn the phone on and you turn it back on again, you have these two shortcuts at the bottom of the screen. You can change these to make them any app that you want so that when you turn the screen on, you can just swipe up from that corner and it will take you right to that app. So in this case, it will take me right to the, the phone app just by putting in my code there and I'm right at my phone app. Well, maybe you say, I don't really want the phone app to be though. I'd rather Snapchat or Instagram or something else I use more frequently. No problem. We're gonna go to settings. We're gonna go to lock screen. And we're gonna go to app shortcuts. And we're gonna change it to, so go to left shortcut, select the app you want. I'm gonna say, I want the left one to be Google Chrome. And I want the right one to be my calculator because I calculate things all the time. And just to show you one more thing, there is a new option that's called hidden and you can hide them and you can basically uh, tap on it first in order to get those shortcuts to come up. I'm gonna keep them there. I think it looks better this way. And from there, I'm gonna turn the screen off, turn it back on again. Now I have my new shortcuts. I have my Google Chrome and my calculator. I can just simply swipe up, put in the pin or, or the pattern, and it'll take me right to that app. So you gotta love that. Definitely, again, customize the phone to what you're going to use it for. To me, that is what makes the most sense. All right, our next tip 
is gonna show you how to make some adjustments to the notification panel, which is when you swipe down from the top of the screen, you have these little icons here. But a lot of people don't know you can change the order of those icons and you can put them in a, an order that makes more sense to how you use the phone. So if I just pull down again, it'll show me more of the options and then there's more on this page as well. Now I'm gonna tap in the upper right corner on these three dots and tap on button order. And from here, I can change the order completely. So I'm gonna put my flashlight as the first option. And keep in mind, the first six switches are the ones that you're gonna see every time you swipe down. So those first six should be the most important things to you. Let's see, next I'm gonna have my mobile hotspot because I use it all the time. And then after that, I'm gonna move Wi-Fi calling down because I don't use that too often. I'm gonna move power save mode up, Bluetooth, and GPS. Those are probably the six that I use the most. And when you're done, just hit done, swipe up. And when you swipe back down again, you'll notice your new six are in the order that we just set them. So definitely just makes things a little bit easier having that set up to the things that you use the most on the phone. So there we go. All right, guys, our next tip is gonna show you how to quickly jump between apps and it's called quick app switching. So let's say you're in between a message, you're, you're searching things on Google Chrome and you're also, maybe you're in the Play Store and you're trying to look for a specific app or something like that. This could also be something like, oh, I'm texting someone and I'm also watching a video or any one of those different scenarios where you're doing multiple things at one time. To to jump back to the last app you were using, all you have to do is hit the recent apps button twice, and that'll automatically take you back to the last app that you were using. Now do remember we did switch these apps when we showed a previous tip, so yours would probably start on this side, and you know if you opt to switch them, then they'll show you know opposite, but just keep that in mind. This one is on this side because we switched it previously in the video. So just hit it twice and it will automatically jump to whatever the last app was you were using. All right. All right, our next tip is gonna show you a really cool setting to use the phone outdoors. It's called outdoor mode and it's gonna adjust the lighting and the temperature of the screen based on the amount of light that the phone is picking up. Essentially when you're outside in a lot of sunlight and the screen normally gets washed out. Go to your settings. Go to display and then just turn on outdoor mode. And outdoor mode basically says, make the screen brighter for outdoor viewing. After 15 minutes, outdoor mode will turn, on, will turn off unless you're still using the screen. So just by turning this on, it's gonna adjust the, the brightness for you and make sure the phone is easier for you to see outside. Our next tip is gonna show you how to adjust your icons and your font size. And this is a, a, a little tip that I like to do because it to me it makes the phone a little bit cleaner. And just to refresh you guys' memory, we did make a little tweak to the home screen grid, but this essentially is how things look right out of the box. So the icons look rather large. And some people like to have things large on the phone, but I like to have things a little bit smaller because it just gives it a cleaner, more polished look. So I'm gonna show you how to make this tweak. You can always undo it if you really don't like it. Go to the settings, go to display, and go to font and style. And here, I'm gonna just make the font the smallest it can be. And so we can see how it just kinda of shrunk everything down. And then go to font style. Here you can adjust which fonts that you have you can also download new fonts with FYI there. And let's see. So now when we go back to the main screen, you'll notice that the text size is smaller, which again, depending on how well your eyes are, you may not want to turn on this feature, but um, I think it just gives it kind of a, a cleaner look. So I like to turn it on. So um, there's that. Now there's also another little tweak i have to see if i can find it I believe it's screen zoom 
this is it. So with screen zoom, same thing. We turn this all the way down. Our next tip is gonna show you how to take a screenshot on the phone. And this is by holding down, you're gonna hold down on the volume down and the power button at the same time. So left side, on the right side of the phone, you'll, you'll have volume up, volume down. So volume down, power, same time, screenshot. Just like that, one more time. Takes a quick screenshot and then it will automatically move it to your gallery for you. So that you can do any edits you want. Our next hidden feature, we're gonna show you how to uh, make an adjustment to the home screen. So for those of you that haven't seen this yet, if you swipe to the right, it will take you to Bixby Home, which is a really cool feature that will show you um, app recommendations. It'll tie in things that have to do with your Facebook and with other apps that you use, uh, themes and things with your pictures, um, weather, all kind of fun stuff. Now, some people like this, some people don't. If you would rather not have it on your screen, that's no problem. You're just gonna hold down on the home screen, swipe to your right, and you're just gonna hit this little switch, and that will basically get rid of Bixby Home, so you don't have that option there. But I would encourage you guys, give it a try. Uh, you might like it. Uh, it does take a minute for it to kind of see what type of things you use on the phone, but after that, it will customize the content based on things that you use. Our last tip for the video is gonna be a cool feature that comes with this phone that you won't see on every Android phone and it's just a cool way to zoom in and out in the camera mode. So we're gonna swipe up, go to the camera. And right here, we have these little options here that will allow you to zoom. So this is zooming in closer, 2X, and that's gonna be a 1X. So you get that quick zoom right there that's still gonna give you a nice crisp and clear picture and that's just right there also just as an FYI um, this slight change that Samsung has made has confused some people so I want to just make sure you guys understand this so if you want to switch the camera mode you just have to swipe to the left or the right on the screen you also can select these buttons right here so there's video photo pro and panorama so you just have to swipe to the left and that's how you move between the different uh, camera modes all right guys we went over a lot in this video I hope you guys are still with me hope you learned some great things do me a quick favor uh, leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite tip was that you learned in this video and let me know if you knew a lot of these or if a lot of these were new information we always love to hear your feedback hit that like button if you found the video helpful subscribe if you're not a subscriber as well also check out our description section we have a lot of good resources in there from again accessory recommendations to um, um, th that specific accessory that allows you to wireless charge and we have a link to one of our favorite wireless chargers as well so if you like this feature and you thought it was pretty cool definitely uh, pick up one if you notice if you go back to the beginning of the video the phone was at around I think 18 or 19 percent and the phone has gone up 10 percent uh, in in the whole process of us filming this video so just to show you how fast the the little dongle works a lot of chargers, if you're plugged in, the battery is not gonna go up if you're using the phone, but this one continued to charge the phone even though we were actively using it and the screen was on. So, just something to think about. Thanks again for watching, guys. Also, uh, stay tuned. We have a hidden feature video coming. We're gonna show you how to turn on that cool dark mode, how to use split screen, and a couple other really cool features. So don't miss out on that. And on the next screen, you're gonna see a green little circle. That is a link to our new site, Tech Made Easy. We have some other really cool videos coming out on that channel. So if you can hit that button, show some love and subscribe, we appreciate that too. Thanks again for watching guys. Take care and have a good one.